Everyone I see on Twitch is using green screens wrong. Every tutorial I see is telling you how to set them up wrong. Today we are fixing that. You will learn where to get one, how to set it up and light it properly for OBS or Streamlabs. And most importantly, I'm gonna give you dozens of backgrounds to perfectly trick your viewers into thinking you have the coolest or at least funniest stream room in existence. Straight out of the gate, let's talk about what you will need. First, a webcam. I. I don't think I need to say more. Today, we're gonna to use a Logitech C922 for this tutorial. Second, you will need a green screen. Way! You might think I don't need to say this, but I do get asked every day how to turn on the green screen effect inside OBS. Anyway, I will link in the description several different options for green screens from different brands that I personally trust at different budgets for everyone. Today, I am gonna be using the Elgato green screen. It's expensive and I don't recommend it, both because of that and because mine broke two weeks after getting it. <sighs> but I'll link it anyway because people love Elgato. You will also need lighting. The reality is this will make or break not just the green screen, but also your webcam quality. You see, a green screen works by telling your software to remove all of a specific shade of green. So the better we light our green screen evenly without shadows or bright spots, the less shades there are, and that means the easier it will be to remove. And obviously, it removes all green things, not just green screens, so don't wear a green shirt. Is he gonna hit the corner? <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> Personally, I prefer running a cheap two light setup. I currently have one on either side of me at different intensities to light myself properly. But if you have a green screen, sometimes you might need a third light that we call a green screen fill, which will help remove harsh shadows that you might be casting from the lights that are on you. See, look, there are shadows on it. I haven't lit this yet. With lighting, the number one, and I really mean the number one mistake every streamer makes is, whoa, you'll hear that secret in a second. First, why not enter our giveaway sponsored by Owned.TV. Owned has given me dozens of vouchers, which also work along Inside their global sales, which means right now you could grab pretty much any of their overlays for either free or just a few dollars. They have both animated overlays, alerts, and more for your stream, but they also have static overlays that take up much less PC resources, meaning you can let those resources focus on encoding your sick gameplay. I'll give these vouchers away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is comment hashtag owned giveaway. Massive thank you to Owned for sponsoring this video. If you want to support me, enter the giveaway so I can give back to you guys. And now back to the video. No, seriously, the number one reason your webcams and green screens tend to look like crap is because you buy these little newer USB lights for $65 dollars. That's Australian dollars. These things are incredibly weak, they're cheap, and it will mean that you usually end up having to digitally increase the brightness of your webcam, which makes it look like shit. Personally, I recommend if you're a beginner getting a two pack of newer 90Ws because of three major reasons. Reason one, usually they're around 100 to 200 AUD for a two pack, which is very cheap for America and Europe. Reason two, they output 2100 lumens each. Essentially, they're nice and bright. Right. Those little newer ones only output a thousand each. So you're getting double the brightness per light for not double the price. Reason three, they're a high CRI of 95% or more and they're by color between 3200 Kelvin and 5600 Kelvin. So the light essentially can produce a really accurate color but you can also change their temperature to be warmer or cooler to suit your skin tones and your camera. I will link a few different lighting options down below, but it's really important to remember these will change a lot throughout the year. So if they're out of stock or unavailable, try to look for lights that have those three rules I just mentioned. Once you have your lights, let's get them set up. First, you need to set up your webcam or camera. Today, as I said, I'm using this cheap $100 do Logitech C922, which means inside OBS or Streamlabs, we'll go to sources, click add new source, add a video source, and we'll click our webcam. For a specific webcam setup, I'm going to do this quite surface level and focus more on the green screen today as I have a full video on all of these settings. So for now though, you'll see it is just terrible or the technical term, it looks like ass. To fix this, first we need to turn off all of the automatic settings. So right click the camera source, properties, change default to custom, and now you can edit the resolution to be 1920 by 1080p or 720p. But if you plan to crop in on your camera or zoom in later, 1080p is probably the resolution you want. But remember, it is more intensive on your PC. So that's why I actually recommend 720p for most people. Next is FPS or frames per second. I noticed a lot of really laggy issues with this when I set it to highest. So instead, I set this to match the source or set it to simply 30 and that solved all those problems. Color range will want set to 709 and finally the color range is set to full. This just means you're getting proper colors. Now we click the configure button and we need to turn off all of the automatic settings in here as well. And the final step, the exposure setting here, this is set to minus five. I found any other exposure, whether it's higher or lower than minus five, 
causes aggressive lag. But you might be using a different camera to me or a different computer, so try it out for you, but this is where I recommend starting. If you go to these settings and OBS isn't giving you control over them, then you'll want to try and update your webcam drivers or look for a specific branded software such as the Logitech Hub, where you can make and save your adjustments in there instead. Doing all of this will give us our base look, just a dirty webcam shot without any adjustments. Now, depending on your room and how much natural light it gets, you might get a lot more quality than me. But my stream room has no natural light because I prefer to block it all out, turn off my ceiling, and instead just use these two lights. So without my own lights, as you can see, it looks like utter garbage. Now, again, I have an entire video on the theory of lighting linked in the description. I do recommend that after this, but today it's green screen focus. So let's get straight into setting up your lights. Let's start by turning on what we call our key light. So for me, that is my light I have positioned to my right, about 45 degrees and about 10 centimeters higher than my eyes. It is a bit dark, so we're going to slowly raise the brightness until it starts to look nice. Not too dark, but not too bright. I do find most streamers end up sitting in the dark because they're scared of overexposing, but seriously, just give it a little extra boost. Come on, come on, give it a go. Instantly, you can see this is beginning to feel much better, but the light is so far to my right, I've got shadows on the other side of my face. To fix this, I turn on my other light, my fill light, to fill in the other side and make myself have a much nicer shade. And again, I will do the same, slowly raising the brightness until it feels like it looks nice. If you end up not having two lights, you'll just want to move your key light to about 25 degrees and then ease the brightness this way. And by moving it across, you'll still get that nice shading from bright to dark on your face without having it look really harsh because it's coming from so far to the side. Instantly, you can see this is so much better. That's because I'm using directional light to light the key subject, aka myself. And most importantly, I set my webcam or camera to its base exposure and then lit myself properly rather than trying to digitally increase my brightness. Seriously, follow these rules. Oh, but I also set my white balance correctly. This is a step most people mess up or miss entirely and it will make your green screen section brutal later, let alone just making your footage look crap. Earlier, I talked about lights being bicolor or a Kelvin range. This is essentially the temperature or white balance the light they produce is. I like to set my lights to 4700 Kelvin, and then on my webcam, I set it to the same 4700 Kelvin as well to match. It is really important to match these. If you don't, you'll end up looking washed out. Maybe you'll look green, red, or another technical term, you'll look trash. Once you're lit nicely, we need to set up our green screen, but I will quickly say your eyeline is really important here. I recommend placing your webcam at eye height or even just a little bit higher if you have to. Don't go too extreme though, too high up, and it ends up looking like a really weird shot. And I really don't recommend setting the webcam low because if it's looking up at you, it can really accentuate any double chins you might have. Or in my case, quadruple chins, hidden behind a very pubic beard. Some people love the low angle, but they have better cameras and don't eat like a pig. So for now, eye height is better. Okay, let's grab the green screen and get it set up properly. You see, placement is really important. You don't want your green screen too far away or you don't want it too close to you. If it's too close, you'll get these harsh shadows from your shoulders and back, but too far away and it won't cover enough of the frame to remove or it could get really dark and shadowed because you don't have enough lights to light you and the green screen when you're starting out. Because of the lighting setup I used earlier and the brightness of it, I actually have quite an evenly lit green screen already. It can be improved though. And if you see lots of dark or bright spots, well, you'll need to adjust your lighting, but not just yet. First, open OBS, find your webcam source, add a filter and click chroma key. Next, you're going to use similarity to change how many similar shades of green are being removed. Just lightly adjust this, don't go too extreme, and then once you're done, you'll use smoothness to smooth out and fall off the edges of the green around you. If you can't get it nice without removing part of yourself, it might be time to add another light to remove dark spots, or even adjust your main lights to have less bright spots. Essentially, you're going to be slowly adjusting your lights and the filter settings until it's evenly lit and cleaned up nicely. Once you do, if you have little edges where you can't get the green screen to cover, just hold Alt on your keyboard, click the edge of the cam and drag it in, and ta-da, look at that magic. Congratulations, you officially have a green screen set up, but let's be real, this is boring as shit. You're only scratching the surface of what you can do. And in fact, the truth is, I got a lot of my first 20 to 30 average viewers because of my green screen. Yeah, I grew because of a piece of gear. That's so weird. Specifically, because I took a photo of a milk aisle at a shopping center, I blurred it a little bit so it looked out of focus, and I put it behind me so perfectly that when people saw it, they had to click the stream just to ask, hey, are you actually in a f grocery store milk aisle? I would do event streams where I got a picture of a doctor's office with a desk, and then I'd copy that image so I had two, but cut out the desk and then add the background to OBS, add the desk and then place my webcam between the two and ta-da, it looks like I'm in a fancy office with actual depth and 3D to it. So I want you guys to hunt for free to use photos to make your background so much more interesting. But I want you to think about what you can make or do to stand out, be different, be interesting and make people laugh. 
Look at my mate Reeps. He created a full CGI set to make it so he is hosting a late night talk show. And when you do pick a great background, just add it to OBS as an image source, place it either full screen behind you or inside your webcam frame, or just use it in just chatting and have nothing behind you for gaming so you don't block your game screen. The uses are endless. Speaking of endless, so are my videos, so why don't you click right here where I spent seven days mastering seven skills for content creation, where I was told it's the most valuable video I've ever produced. I'll see you guys next week.